In this video, I'm going to introduce the counterfactual regret minimization algorithm. And this is part of a series I'm doing in which the goal is to build a poker bot. And the approach I'm going to use in this video is we're going to introduce some terms and then we're going to look at an actual, we're going to look at the sort of formal description of the algorithm in a sort of mathematical formal syntax. And I'll try and map that to what we're actually going to be implementing in code. And then I'll point you in the direction of a code snippet that implements this in Python, solving um, a toy game called a poker, which is a three card poker game. Uh, it's also called the ace king queen game. One of the things that can be kind of confusing when learning CFR is that there are multiple different variants. And so it can be kind of confusing when you're looking up different articles and videos if you're trying to learn it. We're looking at GitHub projects that implement it because the, um, the actual implementations are really fairly different, even though the kind of theory underlying why they work is all falls under the umbrella of CFR. So like for the most part, the introductions usually use vanilla CFR in which all the nodes in the game tree are, are um, explored. But in practice, MCCFR has um, better performance and it's what we're going to be using. And then within that tree of MCCFR, there's also different ways that you can uh, sample the, uh, the different actions and chance nodes and things like that. And so for this video, what we're going to be using is MCCFR with um, external sampling. And um, we're going to do that because in this paper, it uh, says that that's basically the best option that we can use. And also just by luck, I think um, the implementation is also easier for uh, some reasons that I'll explain later in the video. If you want more resources for learning CFR, here are some links I like. This first one's almost like a mini textbook for like a course on CFR. That'd be good for like an undergraduate student. These two links are, um, I think they'd be good for like a programmer who just wants to get a kind of hand wavy introduction to, uh, to at least what the, the mathematical definitions are and the, uh, the syntax. You can get familiar with that so you can at least take a look at some of the the poker papers and be able to make some sense out of it. And if you have a really strong math background, then uh, this thesis is probably the best for uh, learning CFR. And uh, we're going to be using the pseudocode from, um, from this thesis. And so before looking at the actual implementation in pseudocode, I think it'd be good to just have like a general sense of, of what this algorithm's trying to do. And I'm going to try to explain this without going into too much detail because you just get lost in the details. But essentially, from each node in the game tree, what we want to do is basically we want that node to have some type of memory of what happened when we took the different actions. And then we want to take the actions that had a higher payout with a higher probability. And so basically what CFR is, is it's a, a post-order depth-first search tree traversal algorithm where um, so it's like a recursive function and it returns the value of the uh, of taking that action so it bubbles up these these values from the terminal nodes and then we basically have to save the some information about what happened when we took the different actions and the way we do that in CFR is we compute what's called a regret value which is basically just the the difference between the EV of taking a specific action compared to as if we just played the strategy that we have um, that we have set for that node and I'll go into more detail and show what this means and the strategy that we use at any time at any given point in time from a specific node is just proportional to the uh, accumulated regrets from when we've visited this node in the past so from each node we have to maintain the state which is the regret values from taking the different actions. And one final detail is that the strategy within the individual nodes doesn't converge to a Nash equilibrium, but the average strategy over the entire time that you've been running the algorithm does converge to a, uh, to a Nash equilibrium. So in practice, all that means is you have to keep track of what the strategy you played at when you visited a node, and then you just take the average of that at the very end to get the actual equilibrium strategy. And one more slide before we get to the pseudocode. Uh, I just want to clear up some terminology. So for the nodes in the game tree, they're actually technically called information sets or info sets. 
and that's just because you don't actually know you don't actually know which state the opponent is in. You don't know what actual individual holding they have. But um, I mean, this is real natural from a the point of view of a poker player. Although I think it might technically be incorrect to call it a node or a state, but um, for the most part, it really doesn't matter. So I'm just going to call it. I'm going to use node and info set interchangeably. Strategy. This just means the uh, percent that you take each action. It's also called the action profile. So that could be like, you know, you fold 10% of the time, you call 80% of the time, and you raise 10% of the time, or something like that. Um, that's just called the strategy at an individual node. There's also utility, which is basically synonymous with uh, the payoffs at the terminal nodes. And um, I'm going to use that interchangeably with expected value, although I think it might be slightly different because in the classical sense, the expected value in poker, like in poker books, like the theory of poker, you usually define the EV of a fold as being zero. But with the algorithm, you need the EV to be um, the amount that you put into the pot that you're losing because you need that value to uh, you know, flow back up the tree. But I don't think that matters so much. I'm still just going to be calling it expected value. So all these terms are the same expected value, payoff, and utility. Regret. Um, this is how it's explained according to the, uh, the author of the original CFR paper on this post. And uh, the way to think about it, I think, is to just kind of blank out the, uh, the English definition of the word regret. I just think about it in terms of uh, the utility of taking a specific action. So that's like the, the value of calling the recursive function on that action going down the tree. And then you just subtract off the utility of the the strategy as a whole from that node. And uh, you'll see that in the, uh, the algorithm. And then we use those regrets to do regret matching, which means the strategy in a node at any single point in time, we, um, we select the actions proportional to the positive regrets. So what we do in the, in the nodes is we keep, uh, we keep track of all the regrets that are positive, and then we just average them out, and then we just take the actions in proportion to that, to the, um, to the regrets that we've accumulated over time from running the algorithm. And finally, there's the history, which just means the series of actions that we took to reach a specific node. And um, in the sort of formal math, you'll often see it written as like HA, or sometimes H dot A. So just uh, remember that this is uh, concatenating the history with a, with a new action. It's not, um, it's not a multiplication. And in the actual implementation, you'll see the history it's just uh, an array of action values, and they actually use that to figure out the size of the pot and things like that. And so on to the actual algorithm, and uh, this is the external sampling with stochastically weighted averaging. This is the MCCFR implementation we're going to be using. And the most important thing to note about this algorithm is we don't actually have to track the reach probabilities like we do in vanilla CFR. And um, so with reach probabilities, the idea is that each time you take an action with a certain percent, you basically have to pass that along <clears throat> so that when you go to actually update the, uh, the regrets in a specific node, you weight how much you're adding into that, into the uh, accumulated regret by how often you actually reach that node. And that way, if it has like a really negative outcome, but it's also a node you don't reach that often, then it won't have such a big impact. And uh, we don't actually have to do that when we use this algorithm because it's kind of implicit because we only reach those nodes a certain a smaller percentage of the time because we're uh, we're sampling um, by only taking the actions in proportion to whatever our strategy profile is and so yeah so we don't actually have to uh to pass along those uh, values which makes this algorithm quite a bit easier okay so i'm just going to try and map this to english so initialize for all the information sets and for all the actions in individual information sets, we're initializing these two arrays. Um, this is going to be the regret. So basically, for each individual node in the game tree, we're going to have these two arrays. One's going to be the accumulated, accumulated regret, and the other is going to be the accumulated strategy. And we need that because at any point in time, the strategy that we're going to use is going to come from the, the regrets. It's going to be in proportion to that. And then when we're done, we're going to look at the accumulated strategies to find out what the Nash equilibrium is. 
And this is the recursive function that we're defining. You can see that it's called a couple places internally in the uh, body of this function. And it takes a uh, history and a traversing player. So that's like from the, if you're looking at the hand from the hero's point of view or the villain's point of view. And one of the base cases, if H is an element of Z, this means if the history is a terminal history, so basically if the recursive function made it to a leaf node, then we return the utility of that history. So that'd be like the payoff of reaching that node. And uh, maybe that's the difference between EV and utility. Maybe histories have utilities and actions have EVs. But uh, I guess that's kind of a side note. Uh, another base or another case where we make a recursive call if p of h is equal to c, so if the player at this history is uh, is chance, so that means we're at a chance node, then we sample one of the possible outcomes at that node, it's calling it a prime, and then we recurse down the game tree basically by appending h a prime onto h, and just return the uh, you know the recursive value. Okay, so let i be the information set containing h, so i is just the the node that we're on doing the, uh, the tree walking thing. Um, we initialize sigma of i, so this is the strategy at this node, and we're using the regret matching with the uh, accumulated regrets. So basically we look up this node's um, accumulated regrets and we normalize it so that we take different actions in proportion to what the, the regret totals are. And then we look at the player at this node and if it's from um, basically from hero's point of view, then we initialize two variables. We initialize u to hold the, um, the utilities of the individual actions that we're going to take. And we're also going to have a um, basically the weighted utility um, for each action so that we have the utility of the whole node. And what we're going to do with these initialized values is we're going to just loop through all the actions that we can take and we're going to make a recursive call appending that action onto the history and we're saving it into our uh, array of utilities and we're also updating the uh, the weighted value so this is just looking up the probability that we take this action and we're multiplying it by the utility of taking that action and then we do another loop through all the actions to uh, basically just to accumulate the regret values so um, we don't need to worry about where this number comes from because this is just the uh, the value from the recursive call, and this is our just weighted average of all the utilities at the at this current node. And so we compute this regret value by subtracting it off. Remember from the last slide, and then we just add it into our um, into the accumulated regrets for this specific node, and we return the utility of the node as a whole. And if the current node we're at is um, it's from the villain's point of view, so the player's not equal to the traversing player, then all we do is we look at the, um, the strategy for this node that we computed using the regret matching, and we sample it. So we just use the probabilities and basically use a random number generator to pick one of the actions. And then we just make that recursive call and we save the, um, the utility in this value u. And that's what we're going to be returning. But before we return, we have to accumulate the strategies. And so this is actually independent of this recursive call. I think we could probably switch the order and it wouldn't have an effect. And all we're doing is we're adding this, um, the probability that we take each action. And we're just adding that in so that we can get the, uh, the Nash, equilibri Nash equilibrium at the very end. And yeah, we just return U. And so that's really all there is to this algorithm. And so really all the difficulty just comes in with dealing with the game state. So this is the implementation that I actually like. This is on the AIPokerTutorial.com website that I had linked earlier, and I guess I'll put it in the description also. And it's just like about 100 lines, maybe a little bit more, and it's basically one-to-one, -one, the algorithm that we just went over, except now it's in Python. And you'll see that there's also some really annoying code for dealing with the, uh, the actual game state, which I think is... In most of the GitHub projects that I've looked at, seems to be the, the big thing that makes these code bases complicated and long, not the actual CFR part of the code, which is relatively straightforward. And so 
Um, I just wanted to point out that this implementation actually does work. I've confirmed it. The only thing you might want to be a little bit weary of is um, he sometimes does this thing where he like mutates this value of pot as he's looping through the actions. And I think it just happens to work because the only actions we have in this game are zero and one, but you really don't want to be doing that. And so if you start making changes to it, you're going to, this is going to bite you. So you should probably just change it right away if you were going to try and build on this. And so that's it. Another thing is uh, this argument you want to pass in three if you want to actually solve poker instead of, uh, it's like a 10 card variant poker, I guess. So yeah, that's that. And um, I think in the next video, what I want to do is actually solve this for poker and then just walk through the, the outputs basically and sort of interpret them and confirm why I'm pretty sure that the, uh, the output is correct and this algorithm is actually doing what I want. And then I guess in terms of building a poker bot, the next step would be extracting the, the game logic out into, um, into something more manageable than having everything hard coded. And then if we can do that and confirm that the outputs are the same, we can probably then just keep building on it until we actually get something working. Oh yeah, and one more thing I wanted to point out on this site, the, uh, the poker implementation I like, but whatever he did for the uh, Leduc poker, I think it's kind of messed up. So I'd stay away from that one, or at least be more critical when you're looking at it. Don't just trust that it's going to work. And so, yes, yeah, so that's what I'm going to be doing. And so if you liked this, please uh, like and subscribe, and I'll see you next time.